faster than usual. Now, when we say that, uh, I'm speaking in reference to the fact that you can hasten the fulfillment of something by a proper understanding of the principles that govern those things. So you don't beat around the bush. You go straight to those areas and you work those things. And, and I mean, for example, a uh, man used to, to take you 17 hours to fly, let's say, from Lagos to London. But as people began to understand the principles of aerodynamics and all of that better, they could now hasten the time of fulfillment by focusing on those things that were actually creating the impact. In the same way, as you come to a better understanding of things that actually govern the manifestations of things, then you will reduce the activity and take away from all right, your own situation or your own life or the principles you're applying, those other things that are just distractions and focus on the real stuff. And uh, we want to talk about the concept of divine helpers. Now, I know people throw this around a lot in prayer, but there is a true concept in the scriptures of divine helpers. In 2 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 18, the scripture speaks about and 2 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 18. All right, 18 or First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 18. Sorry, First Chronicles 12 and verse 18. It speaks about divine help. It says, And the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was the chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse, peace be unto thee, peace be unto thine helpers. For thy God helpeth thee. So he spoke here about God helping thee. And then David received them and made them captains of the band. He recognized that these were helpers that were sent by God to him who had certain skills in certain areas and immediately he made them leaders within his camp. But the scripture refers there to, Thy God shall help thee. Put that scripture back up. And it says, Thy God shall help thee. Peace be unto thy helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. If we can reverse that and say, For thy God helpeth thee through all right, the helpers that he has given unto you. So if we talk about the throne of grace that we come up to, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need, that help also could involve our right, divine helpers. So God must be our source of total supply and only source. This is the only way this thing is going to work. No other person is your source. God alone is your source, every other person can be replaced. God is the only one who remains permanent and cannot be replaced because he is the head and he is the one who through channels. He is making use of channels which are people in order to reach you. So we must embrace the concept of divine helpers with God as our source. And what that means is that we consciously and strategically pray in these people into our lives. So we maintain our confession of where we are going to, but now we understand that we can consciously and strategically pray people into our lives. Uh, the fact that you have a direct encounter, we're going to say this, where Jesus in the place of prayer doesn't even mean he's not going to deploy, help us there. So you can have powerful encounters with God. 
But it doesn't mean God, by direct action, is going to do things without involving people. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, not holding the head from which through joints and bands, all right, we have nourishment minister. All the body through joints and bands has nourishment ministered on uh, to them. Now, Luke chapter 13, verse 33 to verse 35, starts speaking to us about the effect of not understanding this. All right? It says, nevertheless, I must walk the walk and tomorrow, all right, uh, 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 for it cannot be that a prophet will perish out of Jerusalem. Verse 34, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, and you stone those that are sent unto you. He said, how often, several times, not just a few times, which means there are things you may be believing God for. He said, how often, several times, I will have gathered those things together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings. But you will not. And that refusal there was in the killing and the stoning of those that I sent to you. Now, if they had been accepted, he says, that would have been able to gather all of that. And then in the next verse, he says that, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say that a confession that you make. You are not going to have a manifestation of Christ in your life until you declare and make it part and parcel of your confession that blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Which means anybody that God sends, there is, you come to recognize the power and the measure of blessings that come when you receive those that God sends into your life. Uh, and you find out that the house of that person is desolate. He says, why is it not dead? Why is it not fruitful? Why? Because you have stoned the prophets. And you have killed the prophets and stoned those that I sent unto you. Uh, and that arrangement is not known to you. You have this one-on-one -on -one walk with God. I'm a powerful person, all right, in God. Uh, and, and I pray a lot. I heard a story of someone who told me, he said, he had a neighbor who started a church. The church has folded up and he'll fast and pray. And sometimes he'll be there for 12 hours praying and nothing happened. Now, what will have happened is that in the midst of the prayer, just like Cornelius prayed and he didn't understand the process, but he was open and an angel came to him and said to him, your prayers and your arms have come as a memorial. Therefore, send to one Simon and he shall tell the word. I believe if you check the life of that person, people may have come into him and told him, invited him maybe for meetings and said, why don't you come for this conference? And maybe the title of the conference was a church growth conference. And he found that terminology offensive and stoned them and said, oh, the person who was holding the prof, uh, conference, he found the individual repulsive and killed that particular person that slandered that person with their words and refused to go anywhere and just sat down there with God, praying and praying. And maybe somebody else came in, an old friend, and suggested certain things to him that he could do that he didn't think was deep enough and, and really spiritual. So God must have sent people in answer to his prayer. And oftentimes God sent people, but he just refused to respond or open himself to any kind of information flow outside of that which he or she was used to. So we can cut short the time involved when you know how things work and therefore you cooperate with him by praying his will and praying his plan into your life. Uh, even when you have encounters directly with God, God still uses people to fulfill the things. Let's look at this example in Acts chapter 9. I want to establish this from verse 4 to verse 6. This wasn't even an encounter with an angel. Paul had an encounter with Jesus, and you see this. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And he said, who art thou? Lord, and the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, that was a sharp end of what 
uh, shepherds when they used to do, you know, like it was like a fucking sharp end of it. He said, you are kicking against that. It's almost like a spear. If you look, that's something that people can relate to it. That's what they call the pricks there. Now, next verse. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me do? Now, why didn't Jesus just tell him? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee. So arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, Jesus then tell him, there's a powerful encounter with Jesus. It wasn't just a praying carrot. This was Jesus that showed up. But Jesus said, they will tell you what you will do. And then it tells us in verse 10, what now happened was, and he was trembling, astonished. Uh, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. So God now went to that person in a vision, the way this thing works. And Ananias and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And verse 12, it says that, And hath seen a vision, and a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he may receive his sight. And the scripture says in verse, and Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard, all right, by many of this man. Now, he almost did not go. And this is the reason why people don't even receive those that are sent to them. They say, well, I've heard several things about this person. I've, I've heard about many about this man, how much evil he has done to the saints that are in Jerusalem. Without an open vision, it would have been difficult for Ananias to do this. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said to him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and king and the children of Israel. And you will tell him many things he told him that he is going to suffer for my name's sake. That's verse 16. He will suffer for my name's sake. Now, there was a reluctance to go. Uh, and, and this is why you must be in prayer because some people may have a reluctance there to come to you because of past behaviors or things that you might have said or done. And that's why you have to stay in prayer. This is why prayer is so important. And the ministry of angels in answer to prayer. But it's very important. So when you are offering up the prayer, you know, you could simply have said, Lord, send somebody to me who shall tell me what I need to do in this situation. Full stop. Now you are praying for the growth of your business. And as you're praying out of that prayer strategically, you ask God, send somebody to me who will tell me what I ought to do about this particular thing. And the person that God raises up might be somebody you've heard about in the business world that has done something, but God says, listen, listen to what she or he will say unto you and hearken to their words. Now, instead of just in isolation, this is what we're saying, praying for the growth of your business, now you understand strategic level of prayer. Send somebody that will tell me in this situation what I am supposed to do. Uh, uh, bring in somebody. I'm putting in a bid for a major job here. Lord, send somebody into my life that will teach me how to go about this thing. Not just confessing the thing, which is fine, but also knowing that there are things that are needful in addition to the words that you are speaking. For James said, you can say be thou warmed and filled, but you have to give those things that are needful. And so send somebody in that will show me. Very simple, but very powerful. All right, principle right there. So we hold on to the head by which joints and bands nourishment is ministered. Uh, God's hand upon you will fetch the most strategic people into your own circle. Now look at this scripture in Ezra chapter 8, verse 17 and verse 18. Ezra 8, 17 and 18. And I sent them with commandment to idol to the chief of the place of Cassifier, and I told them what they should say to idol here. And to his brethren, it says, Nathimimos, or Nathims, Nathimims, at the place of Cassifier, and that they shall bring unto us ministers for the house of our God. 
Now look at what he says, verse 18, very powerful. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. They requested that people be brought. But hear what he says, by the good hand of our God upon us, that hand made sure that they brought unto us a man of understanding or a man of skill. Now, if it wasn't a man of understanding they brought, in other words, I think it was J.D. Rockefeller who had a problem with one of his engines, or Henry Ford, and he had paid many engineers for it. And they came and finally they told him about this engineer who was exceptional. And he got the engineer in. And that one said, put on the engine, and he listened. And went somewhere and tightened a bolt. Now, I had spent so much. And at the end, the man said, oh, and the engine worked perfectly. He said, so how much is it? He said, $10,000. He said, $10,000 just tighten a bolt? He said, well, let me rewrite the invoice. $1 to tighten the bolt, $9,999 to know exactly where to tighten. You brought in people here that didn't know what to do. And you spent money. And nothing happened. But the good hand of the Lord bringing into your circle a person of understanding. And this, I mean, you are hiring people. You want to pray that to God. Bringing people of understanding. I'm telling you, this is God. I was sleeping when God opened my eyes and said, preach on divine helpers. This, this is one of the major areas that I'm going to work with in 2023 to bring about breakthroughs to the people. So, the hand of the Lord brought in a person of understanding. Now, the types of people that you must pray into your life. Number one, you have to pray in people with strategic information on what you are reaching for. You've got to write it down. Praying in people with strategic information and don't pray it today and tomorrow and forget about it. Make it your prayer until you wear that thing in your consciousness and in part and parcel of your life. You, you keep pushing in the realm of the spirit concerning this. Don't just pray once and be casual about it. You push in there. You wake up and pray in these people into your life. Because it's the, the, this is between life and death. All right? Darkness and light. Total difference. A woman spent all that she had, but rather grew worse and all that she had. Then she had somebody brought strategic information to her and all she had to do was to touch the helm of Jesus' garment and everything. Her whole life savings went on shadow chasing. But somebody brought strategic information. So they are what you call informants. In other words, in warfare, they will tell you in terms of hierarchy, intelligence comes as number one. If you don't have intelligence, then your weapons there will not be used as you ought to use them. So you have to have, that's why strong countries, they, they're intelligence unit phenomena. You talk about CIA, you talk about Mossad, you talk about MI6 there in England, you talk about powerful intelligence, all right? It's very important. Okay? Intelligence comes first. And let's just look at this. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, David was, uh, they went to war in Ziglag and they were ransacked and everything was burnt out and he went to God. They're taking their wives, they're taking their children and, and he went to God, said, so I go up and God said, go up. Now in 1 Samuel 30 verse 8, and so David decided he was going to go up. And the Bible says, David inquired, and the Lord said, Shall I pursue after the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And verse 9, the Bible tells us, And David went, and he and 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook of Bethel, where those that were left behind stayed. And verse 10, it now tells us, But David pursued, he and 400 men for 200 men, 200, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over to the brook of Bethel. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and he gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. Now this, is, this was the answer to their prayer. 
but they didn't even know it was an answer to prayer. We study these things to understand how God moves to know the ways of God. So we don't just pray, but we pray straight this way and hasten the manifestation of things. We are conscious about it. Now look at what happened here. And they gave him a piece of cake, a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom that belongest thou? And went to thou. And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, the servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. Verse 14. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites and came upon the coast that belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said unto him, Can thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou will neither kill me nor deliver me to the hands of my master, and I will bring you thee to this company. And verse 16, And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad. He knew exactly where they were. He said, Can you take me to where these people are? He said, I will take you to exactly where they were. And they were there unprepared, spread abroad upon the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And verse 17, And David smote them from twilight. Do you think the battle would have been this easy without the strategic information coming? And even unto the evening to the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men that rode upon camels and fled. Strategic information is with people. Anything you are reaching for, somebody has the strategic information or a few people on the earth that will make them how the decision makers. What, listen to me, there are people that have it. And what you need to do is to write that down and pray in those people into your life. First set of people, all right, which we'll call the informants, people that have strategic information. Look at Elihu and Job. Job had suffered. He didn't know the way out. They were stuck. And in chapter 32 of Job, after 32 chapters, all right, verse 1, Elihu showed up. All right? Now, so these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Verse 2. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barashel, the Buzite, and the, and the kindred of Ram against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Verse 3. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer but condemned Job. Now he said, had waited till Job had spoken because they were all older than he. This was a young man, but he had the answer. All right? And when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barashel, answered, I am young and you are very old. Wherefore I was afraid and does not show you my opinion. I said they should speak and the multitudes of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Verse 9, it says, Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. All right, verse 10. Therefore I said, Hearken unto me, and I will show you my opinion. That's how Job got out. Elihu, who was quiet, sitting down there as a young guy, listening to the elderly people. Culturally, he was one not to speak. There are people that are quiet that might know exactly what is supposed to be done. But culturally speaking, they're not speaking up. They're not showing you their opinion. They are sitting with you in board meetings. They're sitting with you in strategic places, but they are not talking. You've got to pray out those voices into your life consciously because it was a life and death matter. Got Job off the sick bed. Got Job's family restored. Got him back. Strategic information. This is how God does it. That was the manifestation of grace right before Job there. Second set of people you must. So just talk about a few things here. And you'll be surprised at some of the things we're going to say here. You need to pray in bands. Now people move in flocks and in groups. Don't forget this. If you are praying for clients, don't just pray for single clients. Pray for groups because people move in bands and in groups. So you may, all right, be dealing with something and 
you need to pray in somebody, all right, but, but you're praying in the group, which means a friend, a group, they are all 10 friends that, that will go to the same place. All right, you need to pray in bands. You need to pray in groups. And for campuses, don't just pray in the individuals into your churches. Pray flocks of people. They come in in groups. Uh, they come in in flocks there. It's something you need to understand. Birds of the same feather flock together. People move in groups. And sometimes God positioning you with a group there. I'm bringing, I'll show this, bringing a group into your life just will be the game changer. Psalm 8, 68 and verse 6, it tells us that God set the solitary in families and he bringeth out those that are bound with chains. But the rebellious, which means they rebel against these families, they, are, they believe in isolation, dwell in dry grounds. Families sets the solitary. He always wants to set people in bands and in groups. He doesn't want anybody isolated. He always wants to put you in a group. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 to verse 2. This was David. David had to come to understand it. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And the Bible says that everyone that was in distress, but it was a group, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, and they have gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were about 400 men. Now, they say men, David was rejected in the cave. Now, if we go to 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, you will see what happened. All right, now all Israel gathered themselves to David, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Next verse. And moreover, in time past, when Saul was king, thou was one that led us out and brought us into Israel. Now, the whole Israel came now and said, We are bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. But the only people that identified with him at a stage were these people. But this band was what he needed in order to get to the place where he was going. So don't be repulsive to networks and groups of people that God will place you in. You need a band to get certain things done. That's why 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5. Uh, the Bible tells us, 2 Chronicles 26, and he sought God. This was Uzziah. He sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. But see what God did practically for him to pass, prosper. Verse 9 to verse 13. I read that so you know that he was hooked up there. He was linked up and he held on to God. But this is what God actually did to make him prosper. Verse 9, please put up. Moreover, Isaiah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall fortified them. Verse 10. And he built towers in the desert, dig many wells, both low country and all of that. And the Bible says, and the vine dressers in the mountain and camel, for he loved husbandry. Husbandry means famine. So the real passion of Uzziah was famine. He loved it. But see what God did to help him. Moreover, Uzziah had a host of fighting men which went out to war by bands. According to the number of their count, by the hand of Jerel, the scribe and uh, Messiah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. Verse 12, the whole number of the chief of fathers, many men of valor, were 2,600. And the Bible says, and under their hand was the army 300 and others. And they made war, all right, with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. They didn't take individual here. It took bands of people. Some things cannot get done except it cannot be done through networks and companies, and what you call family, all right? So, pray in individuals who are informant, pray in strategic networks, families, groups of people that can change things completely. God sets you in a family uh, of 15 people who all go to this country club together. They become your clients, game up in terms of fulfilling certain things within your life. You need bands. Those who know, know what we're saying. The third thing you need are people with skills. So you need informants. Then you need people with skills. You've got to pray, pray this in. 
depending on what the skill is. All right? Now, I want you to look at this. And particularly in this age where we live, you need to pray in people with technological skills. I know what I'm saying. Tech people. And so, no matter what you're doing in life, you need, listen, one of the, what, what was it now? Um, what's his name now? Professor Neil Ferguson. He talked about a documentary. This is an Oxford University professor on um, what's the title of this documentary? He's one that did Ascent of Money, and then he did another one on, I think it's, this, it's not called this, but it's Seven Pillars of Civilization. And in it, he was talking about the seven things that made the West advance and what has made countries like in Asia and countries now in the Middle East have come to understand and they are adapting these things into their system and making it. And he talked about technology as one of them. In other words, the priority the Western world placed on technology, which means even back then in those days. Now, look at verse 13. This same First Chronicles 11, 13 now to verse 15. Look at this set of people that God brought into the life of Uzziah to help him. Tech guys. All right? Tech guys. All right? First Chronicles 11, 13 there. He was with David. No, sorry. 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 Um, first, um, sorry. Second Chronicles, sorry. Second Chronicles 26, 13 to 15. That's it. And under their hand was an army. We saw this here. 300,000 and, and these folks to help the king against the enemy. Now look at verse 14. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habitants and bows and slings to cast out stones. Now look at the skill of these guys. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men. These were skillful men, engines back then, to be on towers and upon bulwarks to shoot arrows. He's tech. They built engines there. So people were coming on horses. These people were, let, leave it here, please. This was at a level here where they were firing arrows, all right, from the top of their towers. Who, how could you survive this kind of guys? All right, shooting arrows, great stones with all. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. Marvelously helped by who? These cunning men. But it was God who was helping him. But it was this cunning men. Now what happened to him in the next say it got into his heart. Six day. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to destruction, for he which means he got into pride. And they recognized God again as his source. But he was marvelously helped. And how was he helped? By tech. Which means you introduce things into the game in what you are doing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah? You're in business, you introduce things. You're working in an office, you pray in this kind of way, they, they bring in things, and you introduce things that just takes you to another level. And there's fame because it was helped, all right, by these people here. Lastly, finances. All right, you need to pray in people who are custodians of wealth. There are people that are custodians. Now, there are more people you can pray in. Okay? I didn't just say you can pray in prophets, and, but, but you're right. Custodians of wealth. Uh, Luke chapter 8, Jesus' ministry was financed. You wouldn't have seen Jesus saying they're collecting offering everywhere. But how was he doing? His ministry was financed. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 to verse 4, it was financed. And, and certain women, and, and there were women that were really doing it, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. The Bible says, And Joanna, wife of Chusa, Herod, Steward, and Susanna, many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. So these were the people that were ministering, these were the financial supporters of the ministry of Jesus. That's why that ministry was like that. And it's like you now having people who are willing to invest. I mean, how do you lose 
with this kind of team. We are praying this. Informants giving strategic information. You are praying in skill. You are praying in networks of people. You are praying in people that have capacity when it comes, all right, to finances there. Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, there are people like that, verse 7 and verse 8. There are people that have that calling. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Now, but look at money. He that exhorteth should wait on exhorting, and he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. So there are people that the Bible calls givers. Now, all right, which means that they are called into that. So you have to pray those people into, all right, your life. Okay? So praying people who have strategic information, and this is something you do continuously. You don't say, well, just pray the ones. Uh, where are they? Uh, I pray. This is what you devote yourself in concentrated prayer and focused prayer. These people into are calling them forth into your life. Because this can be, the, it will be the difference between light and darkness. Maybe confessing God's word and confessing. If you're not conscious of this, I'm telling you that everybody who is praying, God moves in people into their lives. Or some people don't talk and have the information. Just like Elihu said, I would not say anything. But they are right there, and you've got to pray those people out. All right? And let me just add two more things here. Show gratitude, which means if you've made mistakes in the past, and we all have made mistakes, all right? But you listen to some people you're supposed to listen to, you did them. Everybody's done it. So you go back into your life, or you didn't show gratitude to God for people that he just used, he just took them for granted. Okay? Uh, you are where you are because somebody, I mean, I, I played this... Um, um, in, 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 on social media about, about, about Pele and, and the fact that many things that people are doing, Pele did it. But even Pele himself must have learned it from people. Some of them in the street corner, some people you never knew about. He watched them do those moves. But it's always coming from somewhere. Always coming from somewhere. Always. This is the way God has arranged this system. Once you understand it, then you consciously start praying it. All right? Consciously start praying it. People that will help you in opening doors. Consciously start praying it out there. And God begins to send these people as you begin to confess the word of God, asking in faith. So maintain your powerful confession of God's word about your future. It's written that we'll talk about this. I will do a, a during Christmas period, I will go over this and do an extensive master, master class on this. All right, but hold fast your confession. But then at the same time, all right, pray this and then show gratitude to God. Remember people that have helped you silently, where through the breath of God they helped you. Uh, whether you are in school, go back into your life. Just go back from your parents who just showed love to you and helped you. Just go back into it and start thanking God and let your, the, your heart be saturated with gratitude for people. Because he said, you will not see me until you say, blessed is he that cometh. Not blessed is the Lord, but he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We saw it. That when the children of Israel prayed to God, they were in bondage. God sent a deliverer. But because they didn't understand the system, and he sent Moses. They rejected Moses. They stoned Moses. They did all kinds of things to Moses because they didn't recognize the system of God. That God is not going to do it directly from heaven. His grace will be manifested in somebody that he will send who will come into your life and do this. Simple message, but the power is in the practice of this. Who was I listening to? And they asked him, and he said, what was it? Oh, this was yesterday, the first day. And he said, the difference is not in what people know, but many times, all right, that people know things, is the application. All right, so the difference we're seeing is in the application. So apply this. Take time, pray. All right, this year, we're going into a fast for 21 days. Use these 21 days to pray in. That's in January. Divide help as part of your prayer point into your life. Strategic information. You see that thing that is naughty? You don't know what's happening. How do I get this? The doors are being shut. Somebody in that system has strategic information. You might be going to an office repeatedly. Somebody in that place has strategic information on your career. Somebody has strategic information that they can give to you. All right? Can tell you which way you're supposed to go. Somebody has it. All right? There are bands, there are networks on this earth that you need to pray in that will just change the game for you. God wants to set solitary families. Okay? 
Then again, he wants you to pray for people that have certain skills to come into your life and help you in what you're doing. And particularly pray in people that will amplify and cause what you are doing with technology to go global. That's what happened to the king there. It, the thing went global, Uzziah, based on the system they brought. He was light years ahead of every other person. Be, all right? And then pray in people also that have wherewithal and finances to come into your life to help you. Two, three of those kinds of people coming in with a divine mandate changes your entire life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for 2023 ahead of time. This is going to be the best year of our lives so far. A year of open doors, a year of divine help, a year of the miraculous. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit on that year. And thank you that you daily should care for us and loaded every day with benefits. I ask that this word takes root in the hearts of every single person and brings forth fruit according to your plan for 2023. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, please, a uh, few announcements. Watch night service is going to be a corporate service in Lagos at the Tafa Balewa Square. We're going to have it there. We'll have about 15,000 chairs there for people, All right? And then um, it will be broadcast into the other centers outside of Lagos. Okay, other centers outside of Lagos. Okay, only. All right. Um, number two, uh, morning service on January 1st. Now, it has happened many years ago in this church, and I was of the opinion that people may not want to come to church January 1st. So we just had a service. After we talked about it, said, let's just have a service. And some people got to the service before, before myself, the pastor, and before, any, before anybody, the place was empty. And they were already there, waiting, all right? At the time, we used to have service. So let's assume that we decided to have, I think, one service and just do it at 10. People were already there for early morning. So I said, no, we're only having one service. So people are different, okay? And some people want to come. It's the first Sunday, in the first day they want to be in church. So January 1st, there'll be a service. Each of the campus pastors will announce most of the churches will be having just one, all right, um, 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 service where it is possible, all right? Uh, and so they will make the announcements concerning that. WAFBEC, that's the West Africa Faith Believers Convention, our 10th year anniversary, or the 10th anniversary, comes up and it will, will start on the 2nd of January here. Yeah. Now we need help. We are praying for help us now, okay? Particularly, we want people to put out videos. We want you to do creative stuff here, announcing to your friends. They should call me in, all right, for WAFBEC. These things succeed because the base actually decides to go out and to bring and to, and to talk about it. Word of mouth is the most powerful from an average person there. It's the most powerful way of communicating, all right, expectation and bringing, all right, people in. So there are two levels here. There's communication, all right, which involves persuasion, and then there's mobilization. There are two separate things. Okay, you may persuade people, but you people have to be mobilized to come in. And persuasion or communication means you're informing them about something, but then mobilization means you are calling them up, all right? The night before, the day before, they could be abroad, it could be online or physically speaking, all right, telling people to come in, okay? So big conference, the women did a lot of videos. You are not helping us, we're asking for help. Okay, that do help us do this kind of videos that you did for uh, B conference. It's an appeal that I am making. We have prayed for divine helpers. We are sure many of you will respond to it. All right. <laughs> okay, then. So, want to see videos, creative videos out this week and, and uh, pushing it, telling people your own story. And that's the most powerful way to communicate. Just tell them your story, what you personally have gained from attending Wolfbeck in the past. This, listen to me, storytelling is the most powerful way of communication. Tell your story full stop. Don't make promises that you can't guarantee. Just tell your story. I went in. This is what happened to me. This is what I, I invite everybody in my network. This is what, all right, these meetings are for. Thank you very much. All right, see you Christmas service. All right, it's Sunday, it's Christmas Day, so we'll have... Uh, Christmas service there. God bless you all and have a Merry Christmas. Amen and amen.